right, the book of Numbers. Now, the Hebrew title of the book of Numbers is the word Bar Midbar, which means in the wilderness. Now, it is taken from Numbers chapter 1 and verse 1, where it says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness, Bar Midbar, of Sinai, in the tabernacle of meeting. Now, the book records the journey of the children of Israel in the wilderness. After they came out of slavery from Egypt on their way to the promised land. Now, you find that their journey in the wilderness also describe our journey here in this present world. Now, why do I say that? Because Jesus said in John 16, 33, that these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In a world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So you find that in this present world, very much like the wilderness experience, there will be tribulation. But the good news is that Jesus has overcome the world. So like how He overcome, we too can overcome. So if we want to navigate successfully and overcome the wilderness of this life, we need to glean from the book of Numbers. Now, at the heart of this book, Numbers, is about a holy God dwelling in the midst of His people. So it is really about how God, who is holy, but yet He loves us and He wants to dwell amongst His people. First, you will see Him dwelling in the pilgrim camp in the wilderness, and ultimately, one day, He will dwell in their midst in the promised land. So you find that God is holy. As such, His people must be holy. You will find that an unholy people who come into contact with the holy God will be consumed by His wrath. And if they continue to be unholy, He must either abandon them or destroy them altogether. But you know what? Because God loves us, God will not give up on us, and He will not let us go. So He sent Jesus. Jesus became the answer. So that now in Christ, we all can stand in the holy presence of the living God. And that is why, when you look at the story of the adulterous woman, whom when she encountered Jesus, she was not destroyed. Rather, Jesus told her, neither do I condemn you. But yet, you find that Jesus did not stop there. He went on to say, go and sin no more. Why? Because God loves us. He doesn't cast us away or condemn us. But yet, He is holy. He is still holy and there is a demand for continual obedience to God. And Jesus promised this in John chapter 14 and verse 23. He answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Everybody say, keep my word. Keep my word. And my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So notice there is a demand for continual obedience, the keeping of His Word, and the promise is that He will come to us and make His home with us. God dwelling in the midst of His people. So you find the way of life is always the way of obedience. Shall we all say together, the way of life is always the way of obedience. All right, all these are what we have learned previously. So I finished my introduction, so let's begin. Now let's come to Numbers chapter 5. So you find that previously, in Numbers 5, I showed you that there were specific instructions that the Israelites had to obey. They are, they are instructions about sin, 
and how to deal with sin. Now, the people have to resolve these sin issues because they threaten the presence of God in the midst of their camp. So there are three specific case studies in Numbers chapter 5. Now, each with a different issue and shows us a different perspective on sin. Church, Jesus not only care, was carried outside the camp, removed from us, re removed like an unclean person outside the holy city of Jerusalem so that we can be brought back into the presence of God. He was not, he, he did not just die, becoming the lamb who was slain to appease the punishment for sin. Jesus was hung on the tree. He was hung on the cross of all the deaths that he can suffer. Do you know that in Roman, during the time of, of Roman Empire, people died by being beheaded. Some are being pierced. Some are being thrown into the lion's den. But Jesus did not die at the hands of the at the mouth of the lions. Or he did not die by piercing through a spear. He did not die by being beheaded. He died by being hanging on the cross. On a tree. Why? Because on the tree, on the cross, he took the bitterness, the curse of bitter cup on you and put it on himself so that we can be free. <laughs> often our mind as Christians, I've talked to many members, and often we encourage, you know, as Christians, when people go through, so when they're hurting, the first thing is good. Christian brothers and sisters say, oh, yeah, you must forgive, forgive, forgive. Usually the person will say, I also know. Right. <laughs> you, you say it's easy uh, because you've never gone through. I also know. Let me tell you, most of us sitting here, we know. We know in our head that we must forgive. But our heart and our soul is still in pain. Our belly is still swelling if I use Numbers chapter 5 terms, our belly is still swelling, our thigh is still rotting. Something is still going wrong on the inside. The root of bitterness seems it couldn't get away. It seems like a curse. Today I say, God, I forgive, but tomorrow the feeling comes. The hurt comes, the pain comes, and they are real. Who will deliver us from this pain of bitterness, who will deliver us from this curse of the bitter cup? Let me tell you, City Harvest, His name is Jesus. Jesus is the answer. He is the man who is hung on a tree that turned the bitter water of Mara into sweet water. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand clap this morning, shall we? Hallelujah. Church, won't you give all your bitterness to Jesus? Don't go into a new year carrying that bitter cup in your soul because Jesus has drank that cup on our behalf. Remember, how do we deal with unfaithfulness? The very first thing you do is to bring a grain offering. Everybody say a grain offering. grain offering. And remember, what is that a grain offering? Grain offering is an act of submission to the Lord. In other words, the very first thing is to come before the, before the Lord and say, God, I cast it, this entire issue, event and matter into your hands. You're saying, God, I let go. You come, you be the judge. I judge no more. I say one more time. You are saying, and grain offering is where you come before the Lord and say, God, you be the judge. I judge no more. No more. You let go. Friends, you know what? Because bitterness only torments you. Romans 12, 
Verse 19 says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So notice God is a God who judges, so let God do His job. That is His job. I say, but pastor, you don't know what the person do for me. You were not there 15 years ago. Do you know I am right, he is wrong. I did nothing wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you, bitterness only torments you. Our job is to bring the grain offering. Uh, God's job is the judge. So what is our job? Well, we've got to read on. Read on in Romans 12. Look at verse 21. It says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What is your job? What is my job? We overcome evil with good. Everybody say with me, overcome evil with good. Amen. Amen. That is why Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 27, He said this, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good. Everybody shout, do good. Do good. He said, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. That is our job. Our job is to bring the grain offering, city harvest. Don't let bitterness fester in your soul. This morning, let's come before the cross. Let's come to the tree at Calvary and let's cast that bitter cup onto Him who have drank that cup on our behalf, who became a curse on the cross. So that curse is on Him. Curse is no longer on me. And today, I am free. Hallelujah. We were supposed to drain the bitter cup and bring upon ourselves lifelessness and unfaithfulness. How to deal with bitterness? How to deal with betrayal? Well, bring your offering, bring your grain offering to the Lord. This morning, won't you come to the cross and surrender? that beat the soul and drain it out before the Lord. God's job is to be the judge. Our job is to submit to Him. Jesus is the answer. He heals. Amen? In closing, remember the night when Jesus was betrayed. He spoke to one of his closest disciples by the name of Simon Peter. In Luke chapter 22, look at verse 31. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you, that he may seat you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. You know what? Peter was the closest, one of the closest disciples to Jesus. Jesus trusts him with his life. But that night was a night of betrayal unfaithfulness in a relationship where Peter promised the moon but he delivered pizza. <laughs> Denied Jesus three times. The pain of bitterness, the pain of betrayal. I want you to see in verse 60. He says what Peter said. So someone asked Peter, Don't, aren't you one of the disciples? Peter said, man, I don't know what you are saying. 
Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Unfaithfulness leads, often leads to bitterness. And you know what? Some of us, maybe you feel unfaithful. Maybe you have failed the Lord. Like Peter, very often, I also talk to members. I realize when we fail the Lord, there's this bitterness that comes inside of us where we keep condemning ourselves. You promise that you don't do it again, but the next day come, you did the same thing that's exactly the same thing you promised that you won't do. You won't go back, but you do it again. And bitterness came. And this time, you are bitter towards yourself. Friends, this morning, won't you let go? Won't you come before Jesus? The one who took away our bitterness. When your hand is dirty, like what pastor always say, we can wash it with soap. But when your soul and your heart is hurting and bitter, who will deliver us? See the harvest. His name is Jesus. Jesus is here. Won't you allow him to come? I don't know what you have experienced in your life. Maybe some of us, like Anna, you have failed, people have failed you, betrayed your trust. Unfaithfulness that is done to your soul, to your life. You have been carrying this for many, many years. Your head knows, I must forgive, I must forgive. But your heart and your soul is in pain and cannot let go. What can we do? Who will deliver us? Who will heal us? That is why Jesus came. I begin to appreciate the cross more and more because he could, he could die in many other ways, but He chose the way of the cross because it is that on that tree that He took your curse and put it on Himself so that this morning we can be free. Amen? Let's give the Lord a big hand clap, shall we? Jesus.